In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the electric field on the inside and the outside of a parallel plate capacitor. So I've already drawn some figures here, but to start, we're just going to be looking at figure one. Now, figure one is just showing you a, a parallel plate capacitor. One side is positively charged, and the other side is equally and oppos oppositely negatively charged. That might be a little redundant, but they both have the same charge, but opposite in direction. Now, um, what we're doing right now is we have a Gaussian surface that's going to be surrounding uh, both of these sheets. Basically, it's just going through both sheets, treating them as one uh, object. And we're going to be using Gauss's law to calculate the uh, electric field anywhere outside of the sheet. Um, so what we can notice right here is from our field lines that um, on the negative side we see the field lines, they're all going this way. And then on the positive side we see that the field lines are going this way. So if we're going to solve this equation, the divergence through the surface, we would notice that the total, um, or not the divergence, but the um, electric flux density through the surface we're going to notice that it's going to be zero because the same amount that's going in is going out. So therefore, we know if we want to calculate what the electric field on the outside is going to be equal to zero. I hope that makes sense. Now, let's try to look at this uh, by breaking each plate down into, um, into individual plates. So right here, we've got our positive charge plate and I've drawn another Gaussian surface around it. So now this time if we notice the direction of the arrows half like uh, on one side they're all going outward and on the other side they're all going outward. So we know that there's a total flux like there's a there's actually a positive flux that's going through the surface but it's not zero which is is the most important thing. So if we look at that we could solve this equation again we're going to solve Maxwell's first equation Gauss's law and since we're going to be dealing with the surface, um, the uh, integral is going to be the surface charge density times the surface. Okay. So what we notice right here is that we're using uh, like a, a rectangular shaped uh, surface, and um, both sides have area A, and in the middle is area A as well. So for, for this side of the equation, we're going to be having D going out twice. So our electric flux density is going to be going out in the A direction and then in the opposite A direction as well. So it's going to end up being equal to 2DA. Now on, on the uh, right-hand side of the equation, uh, we only have to deal with one of the A's since we're dealing with a, a sheet, a thin sheet. Uh, we just consider it uh, just one area. And so that's going to end up equaling uh, A times rho S. So we're going to get our electric flux density is going to be equal to rho S over 2 uh, over, over 2. And if we want to get our electric field intensity, we're going to have rho S over 2 epsilon 0 in a vacuum. Okay. Now, if we just take a look at it and think about the direction, um, we could say that it's go if it's going away from the surface, um, it could be in the positive direction or the negative direction. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna. I, I want to get a little bit more into the direction uh, once we're done solving the problem. So now let's let's look at the third example. So it's pretty much the same thing. Um, except that all the electric field lines are going into the surface. So if we look at all the electric field lines going into the surface, we're going to have we're going to realize that it's still although it's going towards the surface, it's still an, like non-zero. So therefore, we're going to have to solve the same equation again. And we're going to be getting um uh we're going to have to basically have the same result. Now, let's just try to look at um the directions a little bit, I guess, because it's kind of important. So, if we have our axis like this, for here, going this way, this could be our positive x, and this could be our negative x. And we're going to have the same axis on this sheet. It's going to be the positive x, and this is the negative x. So, um, if, we, if we look at it this way, then right on this side of the sheet, 
we're going to have our electric field is going to equal to rho s over 2 epsilon 0 and since it's a vector we're just in the positive x direction and then over here we're going to have um, our electric field is going to be equal to rho s over 2 epsilon 0 in the negative x direction so this is negative similarly we can see right here uh, is that the electric field is equal to rho s over 2 epsilon 0 and this is also in the positive x direction right because the arrows are facing in a positive way and right here we've got our electric field is equal to rho s over 2 epsilon 0 in the negative x direction okay so right now what we're trying to, to, to look at is that these are two parallel plate capacitors and they're ni right next to each other. So, so right here, r right in this area right here, this is going to be in between the two parallel plates. So using superposition, we're going to realize that the electric field in between the two parallel plates is going to be the sum of these two. So in total, it's going to be E inside we're going with our direction is going to be rho s over epsilon 0 in the positive x direction. Now we already figured out that the electric field on the outside is going to be uh, is going to be equal to 0 so we're not going to be dealing with these because um, these we, we solve this for the plates individually but when we put them together uh, as a capacitor the uh, entire electric field on the outside is going to be 0. So uh, I hope that explains um, the electric field on the inside and the outside of a parallel plate capacitor. If you have any questions, just feel free to leave me a comment. Thank you.